Tell me your name, please. My name is Marcus Anthony Witherspoon, Sr. Mr. Witherspoon, we appreciate you doing this interview with us. Yes, sir. Tell me about yourself. I was raised, I was raised in Clover, South Carolina. My parents are Mark Allen Witherspoon and Shirley Mary Darby. Um, you know, we, I grew up in a home, you know, five boys. And, um, you know, my, you know, bad relationship between my mom and my dad. And they split, they split at an early age. It really didn't have much of an effect on us. Because, you know, mom would still come by at least twice a month. And my dad, you know, he's a hell of a man. You know, he, he raised, it was five of us, four brothers and one cousin. And uh, he was raised, man, basketball, football, baseball. Went to church every Sunday morning. But then I got older. I got older and, 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 and um, I ain't gonna say the streets got a hold to me, but I started doing stuff that I know I wasn't raised to do. Like smoking weed and, 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 and drinking alcohol and stuff like that. Cause see, when I was brought up, there wasn't no beer in the refrigerator or no cigarettes and no ashtray. It wasn't none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 we went to work at 4.30 every morning. And, and uh, that was before we got on the bus to go to school. And, we get out of school, hey, he was still at work. You know, didn't get in the nine in that morning and you know, he get in, cook. Let's say we was raised and, and, and you know, I got went left. Went left. Started doing a whole bunch of stuff I knew I ain't supposed to be doing. Basically just, just experimenting, trying stuff, and I liked it. I like here recently I've been on my own a lot. And alone a lot. Um I don't know. I had some things happen back down south that I wasn't too fond of. You know what I mean? Like dealing with my children and stuff like that. You I, you got kids? Yeah. You married? No, never been. How many kids you got? Four. And uh, things things went left left with with me and their moms or whatever. And, and you know I wasn't being the man that I know I could be or the dad I know I could be. You know uh, I ain't gonna say I'm a piss poor father because even though I didn't. I didn't do financially like I know I could. I was still there. I was there to get them off the bus. I was there to teach them how to say thank you, no thank you, manners. You know, uh, but things went left and, and it hurt me, man. It hurt me. And uh, so me being me, I, I call myself trying to run from it. I ran from pain. But you know. What was the pain? Just being away. Being away from family, stuff like that. You miss your kids? Yeah. Where are your kids at? I I couldn't tell you. I mean, are they in North Carolina? I'm thinking, or is it South Carolina one? Um, you got brothers and sisters? I do. Your mom and dad still alive? Yeah. They all here in Gaston County? They in, stay somewhere. I, I, haven't, I haven't spoken with them. I just kind of, they tell me to do it on my own. And be like, do it on your own. And I'm 39 years old, so of course, you know, you're supposed to be able to do that. You know what I mean? But do it on your own. In other words, sink or swim. Exactly. Exactly. Survive or die. You looking to go home one day? Yeah. Yeah, of course. What's that going to take? I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure if I want to go back to Clover, though. I'm not sure if I want to go back to COVID because, you know, all this and that, all these rumors about this and that, you know, oh, he he an ex drug head, he's a millionaire, he owns this, he on. I don't, I don't, I don't got time for that. I, don't, I can't keep coping and dealing with that. So I'd rather, you know, go somewhere else and start fresh and new. Is what I would like to do. Uh, but, you know, I, I, uh, I ain't too far. I don't like all of it. But I do like the person I'm becoming, though. That's good. In other words, you're growing out of some of the bad choices. What's your bad choices? It's dope. Can't stop. Can't stop shooting the dope. That's, Are you that's, dealing? My, that's my only. That's really my only. Do you deal with addiction? Yeah. What's your drug of choice, sir? Methamphetamines and marijuana. Meth. 
Mm -hmm. Are these streets dangerous? They are. Tell me why. I mean, you got an overpopulated world. You know, so people, people, people getting killed, man. You've been seeing these guys out here overdosing? Yeah, this, I consider these guys as families. Right. You know, I consider, I consider these guys as family, man. How long have you been doing math? About 29 years old. No, 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 no. I say around about 35, 36 years old. How old are you? 39. About four or five years? Mm-hmm. Yep. Who introduced you to math? I did. You did? In the penitentiary. What are you doing time for? If you don't uh, mind me asking. Uh, uh, what was it? Common law robbery. Right. Yeah, I was hiding. A lot of people was out there and I called myself trying to show out. And it caused me, caused me nine years of my life. But the judge gave me a good deal, though, because I, I, I gave him a heart to heart. And he, he managed the way I can slice my time in half. So I ended up doing about four and a half on nine. Made parole early, so it's really one but three. But yeah, I've been out here on my own, man. And, and you know, I, I kind of like it out here, other than the, the you know the negative and you know, the crazy stuff, all the rumors and the lies being told on you and stuff like that, trying to make you something out of something you're not. How are you supporting your habits these days? Nine times out of ten, I I go get clothes or something from the Salvation Army or or or. or I made me a little hustle or something. And, or, or somebody, people give me stuff all the time. I like knives, I throw knives. You know what I'm saying? I like throwing knives and stuff like that. Sharp and I'm pretty good with weapons. Um, but anyway, I get, you know, trade stuff and stuff like that to get to get get my dope or whatever. You affiliated yeah. with the gangs out here? I was. Tell I me about I that. I don't deal with that stuff no more anymore. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, some people, you know, it's, it's family to them because they never had nobody to raise them or bring them up. So it's really all they know. So they treat it like it's family and they'll kill you for it if you disrespect it or, or, or say anything bad about it or, or, or go against it. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, but, you know, it's, it's, for me, I like to be on my own. I, I'd rather be associated with them than a member of it because, like I told you earlier, I like the person I'm becoming. And me, you know, I feel like in my mind and in my head, I'm going to make the right decision. I'm going to make the right choice. I'm going to make the choice to where, like, if, if, if I'm about to do something to you, I'm going to think about you and be like, what if he was me and I was him? Would, he, would I want somebody to do that to me? You know what I mean? That's, that's my whole, that's, that's the, people act like they don't know the difference between good and bad. That's, the, that's your difference right there between good and bad. Just think if that person was you, if you was that person, would you do it to him then? Think about the golden rule. That's that's your answer right there between people not knowing what that was what's good and what's bad. I know? do believe that there are cases where uh, sometimes people don't know, but for the majority of the people say, "Well, I didn't know." That's a lie. That's totally a lie. I was in the I was affiliated before the blood the, the uh, UBN United Blood Nation about ten years ago, and 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 you know I was addicted to drugs. I was in prison, and and you know one of the rules and regulations in the UBN is. You're not supposed to do that. Don't don't abuse your temper. Don't use drugs and alcohol. You work out an hour a day. You read an hour a day. You treat your woman like she's royalty and not your property. You know what I mean? Those are the rules. Those will make you become a king. And it's sharp, but they don't. We, people don't really actually live and abide by the same things that they they laws and their their oaths of spitting. Or More kicking. of an image. Exactly. You know, I was doing drugs, but and, and other and other members was too in the UBN. But because they had a bag or they had a big check, a lot of money, they could do it and there's nothing. But because I didn't, I do it and I get beat on. So it's kind of like big eyes and little U's. You know, and it, it shouldn't be that. Everybody should be royal. Everybody should be supreme. Everybody should be king. Everybody should be triple OG. Equal. You know what I mean? Everybody should be equal. You have regrets? Yep. Can you share them? Or not necessarily all of them. Uh, I don't know, man. If you could have done things differently, what would it have been from day one? I would have probably would have treated people differently. I would have tried to focus on becoming a man way earlier. 
I would have not leaned on my mother and father so much because then I wouldn't really, you know, wouldn't be leaning on them still now. Like, I, I, man, I, if it wasn't my mom or my dad or my baby mama Shaquille Baskins, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have nothing. I wouldn't be nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't be nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's just a straight up God honest truth. Those are the people who took care of me. You know what I mean? They took care of me. And, uh, but it, it, it ain't over with, though. It ain't over with. It ain't over with because you got a lot a life ahead of you. That, all that can be changed. Matter of fact, I, son, I expect those things to be changed. And it ain't saying, when I say I expect, that means I'm trusting. I absolutely believe that everything is going to change because of your decisions from here out. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you want to go home, but you want to go home with something in your hand. That's what you want. You want to go home with something in your hand, self-respect, a job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to go home that way. I believe that. What called, What happened that caused you to wind up in the street? You say you've been in the street for how long? What, about uh, at least three years now. What caused it? How'd you get here? I did it to myself, really. Long story short, I did it to myself, and and, and uh, you know, my brothers and my my dad and them. That I like to say they're part of an organization or or like a way of life, and I ain't made the cut. And and that's just that's just that's just the bottom line. And you know, I didn't like it no more than they did. But hey, what can I do? I'm not gonna go out here and you know feel rebellious and hurt them or something. That, that ain't the way. I just figured to make it on my own. I was blessed that they got this right here. This church, one down the hill. They got City on the hill, man. You got Miss Joyce. You know, and, you know, and us being homeless, you know, we complain a lot. But really, to, you know, compared to other counties, man, we got it made. We got it made. Ain't no people don't. You got people that that bring tents, and food each and every single day. They give you clothes. And, and, and other stuff like that, each and every single day. You know, other counties, they don't they do not do that. Yeah. You know, they, psh, he's a homeless man. I'm going to ride right on by him. He's not, sure. I, I, come, I come from a good family, man, of, of legends, man. My Aunt Alice Carter, Daryl Johnson, Zeb Armstrong, Tump Darby, my dad, Maude Witherspoon, Will Green Armstrong. I come from a family of, of, you know, you know, whether they're business minded or just real, real, very, very, very smart, or had, or had an extra, extra hard coming up in the back of the times when they was coming up in and they made, they they became successful, still through and through. So I come from a, 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 a family of and a group of people that were hell of individuals. You know what I mean? Very much well so. And you know, I'm kind of ashamed. You know, the state I'm in. You know what I mean? But like I said, it's it's shaping up and becoming a whole lot better than what it has been. You know what I mean? And I, I'm gonna still hold on to that hope. You know what I mean? You know, I'm gonna still hold on to that hope. I got ideas, man. I got I got plenty of ideas. I could become a, a, a preacher or a minister or a spokesman, but I don't want to get up in that pulpit knowing that I'm out here still willing and dealing in the streets. I want to be true. You know, I don't want to be no have no no no. I don't want to misrepresent. Nothing like that, you know what I mean? At this stage in your life, what's the most important thing you've learned? I learned to be considerate. I learned to, um, I learned to teach. I like teaching, man. I like to, especially like kids and stuff like that, how to be a role model, life skills, you know what I mean? <clears throat> stuff like that, that's uh. That's what I learned, man. Learn how to be considerate. Learn how to have a heart. Learn how to, you know, because if I had it, man, if it's mine and and, and 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 you need it, I don't care if you white, purple, blue, or black. If I can help you, I will help you. And that's the God honest truth, you know. That's What's the, your biggest fear? My biggest fear is um. Uh, that's my biggest fear. I think I'm facing it, like being alone, man, especially dying alone, you know? Uh, 
My biggest fear is uh, I just want to survive, man. You know, I don't like confrontation. I don't like drama. I don't like fighting and stuff like that. But you know, I want you still want to be prepared and ready for that kind of stuff. You know, but my biggest fear is basically, you know, just not being able to survive, not being able to cope, being all by yourself. You know, and, and you know, dying alone. You know, I got I got plans and ideas, man. You know, I'm I, I'm a big fan of of of, of you know, treating older people right, your elders, respecting them, and kids. Because those are the two that need us, men like you and me. They need to be protected. They need to be taken care of because they can't do it for themselves. It's insightful, man. When you come in the womb, when you come out the womb, you need to, somebody needs to take care of you. When you get ready to leave, somebody needs to take care of you. So I'm a big fan of, of, of uh, you know, taking care of the elders and, 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 and the kids out here, man. I can say, you know, people, a lot of folks these days, you know, they stuck on race and who's got what. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of people in the position they're in because of that's what they were born and raised to do. That's what they've been around to do. It's going to get greater later. I feel that. Like I said, I like the person I'm becoming and, and, and you know, I will overcome all my shortcomings. I like to let my babies know that I love them, that your daddy loves you. No matter what nobody say, I love you. And uh, that's just it. If you had advice that you would wanna share with somebody that is living in the street or looking at the possibility of coming in the street or choosing a lifestyle of drugs, which I'm assuming is what has helped you get into this situation, what would your advice to them be? The golden rule. Do unto others if you had them doing to you. Mind your business. You know? That's how you survive. How you live. You know? You know, if you, me, and you, me and you go do it, uh, got, got a bunch of time to go do it up in Cali. You know, you get in there and you study yourself, mind your business. You don't ask nobody to repeat themselves and stuff like that. Man, you'll survive, man. You survive anywhere as long as you know how to, you know, tend to you and yours. You know what I'm saying? I'm not being smart or nothing. You know what I mean? That's, that's, just, that, that's just what I, my mama taught me that. Say, son, when you get in there, you don't you don't let nobody know your release date. You stay to yourself and mind your business. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. You know what I'm saying? Well, um, Mr. Witherspoon, we appreciate this interview. Yes, sir.